Yo, what it do guys, and welcome back to another video. This breakdown will be a follow-up to the series of the Incarnate Weapons, so if you missed my previous video on the secondary pistol Latum, I will add it to this video's description. In today's video though, we will be looking into the primary rifle, the Fenmore, for its stages of evolutions and builds to help you understand how to benefit from this weapon in the best ways possible. It's to be noted that the Fenmore is similar to the Latum in how to evolve the weapon in missions. You will be needing to hit headshots on the enemies to build up your charge. Whatever stage the charge meter is at, you can simply alt fire and the weapon will transform into its evolution. With that being said, let's have a little look into the evolution stages and what they currently offer. Now I actually have all of my stages unlocked but i will go ahead and put up a text description right here to show you what each stage is required to unlock it was practically no different from the latent challenges so you should be used to them by now stage one evolution as always when unlocked this will be the way that you can transmute your weapon in missions to build up their charge and unleash its true power there's not really much else to go and say for this stage stage two evolution your choices are Plus 50% accuracy and 50% less recoil whilst aiming. Plus 20% fire rate. And plus 80% projectile speeds. To me, this evolution stage looks pretty good and they are all good options for increases across the board in different ways. However, I do feel that the fire rate buff is quite low, so I personally steered away from this selection. The accuracy and recoil is good to help a headshot related build and to help build up that charge more precisely, so you can always go ahead and take that. But that being said, I decided personally to choose the projectile speeds as this weapon does suffer in long range fights trying to be more precise with the gun and always lead in your shots. Any way to help those long range fights for a long range rifle for me will always be a go-to option. Stage three evolution, your choices are plus 50% magazine capacity. When reloading on an empty magazine, gain 100% reload speed for the next six seconds. On headshot kills, gain a 20% chance to instantly reload the weapon. Now, unfortunately, I have a big issue with this stage, so let's have a little bit of a closer look. With testing, we found out that any type of ammo capacity, maximum efficiency or restoration does not affect the suffix of this weapon. What I mean by that is when evolved, you cannot always try to remain within the evolved state by finding increases through any type of ammo. This is something that I think would be quite cool to include, but as for now, it stands as it is. The Ready Retaliation second choice pick for reloading when empty is such a headache of a pick for a player like me and anyone who has an active or historic past with FPS shooters. You tend to become a bit of a compulsive reloader, meaning that if situations are calm and I have the time, I will reload if I have previously shot even just one bullet from the weapon. So as you can see, this isn't a good choice that I can consciously pick out for myself due to my subconscious nature, but for you, it could still be a good option. So that leads us for the third pick, and we have a chance to still benefit from a reload, but it requires headshots to proc. This is my choice of pick as the weapon complements aim and headshots, so I am gonna be choosing this one. Stage four, evolution, your choices are plus 10% critical and status chance, Headshots build 50% more incarnate transmutation charge, plus 20% status chance and minus 10% critical chance. What I do like about this stage and weapon is the way that we're going to complement the two bigger routes that we take in Warframe weapon building. It's usually either a critical or a status build and sometimes it could be a hybrid of both. At first glance, and even right now, I genuinely believe this section to be a complete evolution stage, allowing diversity and flexibility with your builds to complement your choice of pick outcome. For the safest option and a great quality of life, I can definitely recommend to you to choose the second choice pick in this stage, requiring overall less time spent to build up your transmutation and get right into the firing line of things. The other two choices are really build dependent. For this video, I have gone with the first choice, as for the next stage, reasoning and for the build that i took around this choice you will see stage five evolution your choices are a 50 percent chance to deal plus 2000 percent damage on non-critical hits enemies that suffer less than three status effects will receive an extra plus 100 critical damage per shot when you hit the crit chance on two headshots within two seconds gain plus 50 percent headshot damage for the next eight seconds if you haven't already judged it by now i'll let you on the inside scoop here 
The Fed more promotes and gives quite a fair few different build paths that can be complemented with raw damage builds, critical builds, status builds, and like I mentioned earlier, even hybrid builds. I like the choices DE have given for this weapon to complement diversity. If you are looking for a status build, debuffing enemies and boosting damage to scale, then the first choice pick would be more ideal for you here. You want to lower that critical chance as much as you can, so comboing this choice with a stage 4 evolution, Elemental Excess, will help you decrease the critical chance and complement that status instead. Add in the 60-60 Elemental mods for a build like this, and even Rivens where a negative critical chance are also going to be ideal. Between the next two choices, they both complement what I built the weapon for, which is a critical build with Hunter Munitions to allow for weapon and content scaling. The biggest difference between the two is that if you take this middle option, Spiteful defilement you're actually limiting yourself due to only allowing just two statuses on enemies at all times no more that basically means if you play with other players or if you play with a warframe that gives status buffs then this choice actually becomes harder to choose however the lingering judgment third pick choice becomes a better pick to still complement the build that i want with hunter munitions but requires a little more aim to make it work in succession so for the Fenmore guys, these are my evolution picks and thoughts wrapped up and summed up as condensely as possible. Now let's actually have a look at the build that I'm running for it. The build that I went for is going to complement Hunter Munitions mods and the slash procs in Nay doing everything in our power to scale those procs as much as we possibly can, here are what helps and factors in. Base damage. Damage increase is usually what every build is going to want regardless. The more damage, the quicker the death. It's just as simple as that, so bump up that base damage first. Next up we have multi-shot, a solid go-to choice again. Amp up more shots for less ammo consumption and giving it extra damage instances are only but going to help. Fire rate, arguably the best utility increase in DPS output and for this build we're going to be looking to ramp up and stack up those cheeky slash procs as much as we can. Critical chance, the stat to help hunt and munitions proc a bit more often. It still has a flat chance of proccing, the mod itself, but we don't want to lower it any further by having much much less critical chance, so try to keep this as close to 100% crit chance or over if you can. Critical damage, this should be self explanatory, we proc the crit chance and now we get the crit damage increase there you go faction mods now this is the real mvp in the build when it comes to slash procs you'll be wanting a faction mod to double dip and get massive dps returns for it double dipping is exactly what it sounds like let's double that slash procins damage Finally, we also have Viral Elements. Viral is a great way to amplify the slash procs, allowing it more breathing room to really shine, increasing the damage it does significantly. I went with the 60-60 Elemental mods to increase the status chance that I had to really help those Viral procs more often. As for the Exciter slot, you can either do what I've done and help out that projectile speeds to help those long range fights, or you can also go and put in recoil mods to help the control of the weapon. As for the Arcane, I went a bit more of a min-max route here. As you can see, I used the Arcane to replace any base damage mods that fit, so this will factor here instead. If you do not have this option, do not worry. You'll just have to sacrifice something else out of the build to bring in the base damage increases, like swapping out fire rate, for example, because you can always find other ways to generate fire rate, whether it be from Warframes or from Warframe Arcanes, just as a suggestion. But this is just one build that I'm promoting to you guys and one build that I've been going for. There's still plenty more to look into but that about sums up this video the fenmore is a great weapon that again complements all of the metas that we're currently looking for and we're building towards if you do want to go ahead and talk more builds or discussions or anything else about the weapon you can always swing by to my twitch channel on twitch.tv forward slash no sympathy and i'll be happy to discuss it further with you Besides from all of that, a thank you for coming to watch the video. And if you did enjoy it, hit that like button and share the video with a friend who may also need help with choices and builds. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. And as always, I will be seeing you guys again in the next video.